Welcome to Central Youth Online. My name is Trevor. I'm one of the team members here at Central Youth. We are so glad that you joined us here this weekend from wherever you may be watching from. We want you guys to know that this is a place where you belong, you matter, and we do life together. During this experience, we'll have an awesome time to worship and hear an incredible message of hope from one of our team members. Let's get ready for Central Youth Online. Central Youth, how we doing this morning? It is good to be here with high school. Does anyone know a prayer like in this video? I'm going to call out Jason Cho is the sermon prayer. And he'll do it like during meals too, which is the worst. You're like, I'm ready to eat. I've known a lot of different like types of prayers. There's the really short ones. I had a girl in my small group once that I asked her to pray during group. And at first she was like, no. And finally I got her to, and this was her prayer. She said, Dear God, thank you. Amen. I was like, all right, we're getting somewhere, short and sweet to the point. But there's a lot of different ways that we pray, and I think if we're honest, a lot of us are probably embarrassed to pray because we're like, someone's going to make a video about it just like this. I remember I used to say, hey, God, when I started praying, and I had a friend that was like, hey, God, and made fun of me for it, and I could like, I was like, I can never say this again. So today, as we're heading into back to week three of this Back to Basics series, we're talking all about, you guessed it, prayer. And I'm pumped for this. I've been loving this series because what I think is so cool about it is it kind of humbles us no matter where we're at in our relationship with God. What I think is so cool is you never get to a spot, never. Not, I'm not saying just in high school you won't get there, or you'll get there when you're older. You'll never get to a spot in your faith, in your relationship with God, in your maturity, where these basic principles aren't important. You never get too good for them. And so I love that we get to go back to these and just reestablish how important they are. That's why we talked about reading the Bible, about memorizing scripture. We're talking about prayer, because no matter where we're at, we can always get better, and we can always just see how important they are. So I'm pumped to dive in today. First, did you guys bow your heads and pray with me? God, thank you for today, for the students here, and just the fact that we have this place. God, I pray for today as we get ahead and start talking about prayer, something that maybe a lot of us aren't comfortable with. I pray that we would just be able to start with a clean slate. God, I pray that we would be challenged and we would open, be open to being challenged by you today. We'd be open to the idea that we can get better in this area of our lives. I pray we would look for the ways that you want us to change, that you want us to try new things, that you want us to connect to you better. I pray that we would just grow closer to you based on what we hear today. So God, I pray as I'm up here that your words would be spoken through me, we would feel your presence in this room, that we would leave a little bit different because of what you teach us today. So we love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I thought I would kick things off today. I always feel a little better when uh, we get laughing. So I thought, what better to laugh at than myself? We'll do a little bit of embarrassing me today. Um, I got my wisdom teeth out last week. Has anyone gotten their wisdom teeth out before? Yes, thanks, Cam. Anyone in here get your wisdom teeth out yet? Do it soon. Don't wait till you're 24 because it's rough. <laughs> And as you may know, you've probably seen videos that after you get your wisdom teeth out, there's like a couple different kinds of reactions people have. Um, my wonderful little sister Peyton here, her reaction was tears, right? She just like cried. I don't, it didn't help. I was out of town. She was very upset at me. My reaction was I wanted to go full YouTube star. Um, so I took just so many videos and I talked a whole lot so I'm going to show you guys that I made a little compilation of like some of the 10 videos I have please enjoy and make fun of me check it out Tell him, baby Tell him, baby oh no you already started it I, I woke up and you were still doing things and I was trying to I thought I, there was a minute where I thought are you okay I'm good no listen there was a minute where I thought the people need to know this I thought we were in Star Wars which is weird because I don't even like Star Wars that much. But we were all in Star Wars and we were the rebels, I think. That's as far as my dream got. Hey guys, what's up? This is me, McKenna, and I have no symptoms of post, of, of post-surgery. I am completely normal. Watch this. Hey, welcome to Central Youth, where you belong, you matter, we do life together. The doctor said I sang them Taylor Swift during the operation, which I feel like oh. is so thoughtful. That just like, think about that. I took time yeah. out of my operation 
and serenaded them so it wasn't boring. Are you gonna go to work now? To work? Oh, I'm not going to work. Okay, we are going to Target. Um, walking is a little more difficult than I remember it being. I I just got my wisdom teeth out. I'll show you, but when we have to wear masks inside. No. Ooh. Ah. Well, I feel totally normal. And out of the ordinary, Austin's here. He's telling me to be quiet. There's people around there. There's people around. <clears throat> they can be in my vlog. I'm thinking this is going to be the kickstart to my YouTube career. Um, but I have to be quiet because... I'm in Target. Ta -ta 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 Target. That ring. Hey, bye. So there you have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I'm not here next week, it's because YouTube called and um, I'm gonna be famous. So I'll try not to forget you guys, um, which clearly I can't because even when I get my wisdom teeth out, my first reaction is to say, hey, welcome to Central Youth. So I must love you guys a lot. Um, getting your wisdom teeth out is fun for like that hour or after. And then you know what happens? pain, like excruciating pain, um, which was less fun because there's a couple of terrible things about this. One is you can't eat. Um, my sweet fiance who is taking care of me bought a burrito um, and is sitting next to me eating this like, oh man, this smells so good, this burrito. And I'm having soup for the fifth meal in a row. I'm like, that looks really good and I can't eat it, but that's cool. That's very kind of you to eat that next to me. The other hard thing is you can't really talk like communicating, which again, I think Austin really liked because I couldn't talk that much. And I think I got a lot of talking out at the beginning of that video, but not being able to like communicate what you're trying to say can be super frustrating. Has anyone ever like lost your voice or something and you couldn't talk? And it's the most annoying thing because communicating, talking to people is so important to us. Especially I've seen this where like, has anyone ever gotten grounded from like Snapchat or texting? I have seen students go to extreme lengths when this happens to find a way to still be able to text their friends. Like it was insane to me. They're like, oh yeah, I'm grounded, but I have this back door app and then I go here and I log in here on my friend's phone. That way that I can talk to my friends still. That sounds like so much work. But we do it because communicating with people is so important. It's kind of everything to us today, right? And it goes deeper than just wanting to talk to our friends. I found a study that showed that of divorce cases that happened, over 65% of them cited lack of communication as the reason for their divorce. Communication is so important to relationships, to our lives, to our connection with people. And yet, I think that we take one of the most important and coolest ways of communicating for granted, and that's us being able to communicate with God. If you think about it, it's kind of crazy that we have a God that's so close and accessible to us that we can talk to it any minute. But I heard uh, Adam Neary put it this way, that praying is kind of like flossing. Like when someone brings it up, we all know we should probably do it more, but we're kind of like, oh man, I uh, forgot about that again, <laughs> right? So I want to start today kind of like clean slate. No shame, no guilt. I don't want anyone to be sitting here feeling bad because maybe your prayer life isn't where you want it to be. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. My prayer life isn't where I want it to be. And so today what I want us to do is discover and look at and ask some questions about what prayer is. What should we be talking to God about? How can we have better relationship communication with God and how will that strengthen ourselves? So we're gonna get to look in the book of Luke, a story where the disciples actually ask Jesus the question, how do you pray? And you gotta think like there's no better person to ask than Jesus himself. And so we're going to be in Luke chapter 11, and in verse 1 it says, Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. So they're asking the right questions. They want to learn, and this is what Jesus said. This is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. 
Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. He gives this sort of outline. This is how you should pray. And I don't want us to focus on maybe like memorizing this because this is the perfect words to say, but I want to get to the root of what is Jesus talking to God about. And there's three things that I want to focus on today. First, Jesus asks God to provide for him. Give us this day our daily bread. Second, he thanks God. He praises him. If you see, he says, may your name be kept holy. He gives him praise. And this third thing is Jesus just gets real with him. He tells him like kind of the hard stuff. Help us not give in to temptation because we're not perfect and that's still hard. Forgive us our sins for when we do. These are the three things that I want us to focus on today in our prayer lives. And to look deeper into this, I'm gonna ask us three questions. I just want us to be honest with ourselves about and maybe see how those answers depict what our prayer life looks like now and maybe where it should be. And the first thing is what are you asking God for? Just like Jesus asked God, provide for us. Give us this day our daily bread. If you think about that, he's asking God to provide exactly what they need. They need food. It's as basic as that. And so what are you asking God for? I think there's a couple different groups of people in the room. I think there's some people that only ask God when like things are crazy. Only when like there's a crazy family situation and they're like, mom goes, hey, can you pray for this? And that's the only time we pray. That's the only time we ask God. I think there's others in this room that maybe are afraid to ask God for the big things. Maybe we're afraid to ask God for what we really want for these big hopes and dreams. And maybe we're praying kind of safe prayers right now. We're asking God, hey, uh, God, I hope I have a good day. God, I pray that you would just bless this food to my body. I find myself saying this all the time. And these are good things because like Jesus does, he asks for the basics, the daily bread, give us exactly what we need. But I think there's a danger in only praying these kinds of prayers. Because I think sometimes it's like this. We bring this to God and we're like, oh God, this is some really heavy stuff. I don't know if you can handle this. I'm going to put it right here. God, can I have a good day today? God, can I not get in a fight with my boyfriend this week? Can you please like help me get a C in this class? I think that'd be good. And these are good prayers to ask for. But when this is all we're asking for and we're, we bring it to God kind of tentatively, we're like, I don't know if you can do this. I'm not sure if you can handle this. Like I said, this is like really heavy. So if you can't carry this, like that's totally okay. And God is over here saying, hey, you want that? That's nothing. I can carry this. I can't even carry this. And so much more. We're asking God for a good day. And God's like, I can give you a changed heart. I can radically flip your life around. I can end these cycles that you've been going through with your family. And here we are praying these safe prayers because we don't think God can handle it. I'm gonna challenge you today that God is all powerful, all knowing, and he's all present, and he can handle the craziest prayers that you're afraid to ask him for. If we're honest, I think sometimes, and this is where I fall, we're afraid to ask him for these things because we're kind of afraid of being let down. Because I think sometimes we know that we have these plans and God has different plans than us sometimes. I was challenged with this idea in my own small group this past week. And I realized there's been times in my life where I feel like I've gone for it and prayed the crazy prayer and God had a different plan and it really hurt when this didn't come through. But God was working on a different big prayer and he was changing my heart. And now I'm at a place where it's time to be able to trust God and go bold and ask crazy prayers. What are you asking God for today? Do you trust that God can handle not only this, he can carry not only this, but he can lift this and so much more? What is a big, bold prayer that maybe you've been afraid to ask God for? So what are you asking God for is that first question, and the second is what are you thanking God for? Have you guys ever like 
Did your parents ever make you write thank you cards for birthdays or something? And it's like super tedious, and at some point you're like, I don't even know who got me this. I'm just like, my hand is cramping, I don't know. Maybe that's kind of old school, we just send texts now. But I think it's sometimes, for some of us, really easy to ask God for things. God, I need this, God, I need this, God, can I have this? And then we get it and we're so busy celebrating. We're like, yes, I made the football team. We totally forgot the one that we've been asking for it. Sometimes we're really good at saying please and really bad at saying thank you. And so I wanna look in the book of Philippians chapter four, verse six, and it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Look at how those two things go together, hand in hand. You don't get one without the other. If we spend all of our time asking God for things and we never thank him, what kind of relationship is that? If we spend all our time thanking God for things but we don't really trust him to provide for us so we don't ask him for things, we're still not depending on him. These two things have to come together. God wants our needs. He wants us to bring our desires to him, but he also wants that praise to say thank you, to acknowledge, God, I couldn't have this without you. If we really believe that every good and perfect thing comes from God, every gift that we have in our life comes from God, why don't we thank him for it more? There's that old, like, kind of cheesy Christian saying that says, what if you only had today what you thanked God for yesterday? And sometimes I hear that, I'm like, oh yeah, but it's also kind of a gut check. When's the last time I really thank God for my friends? When's the last time I thank God for the opportunities I have? It's the last time I thank God for anything really. So what are you thanking God for? This third question is what are you talking to God about? This gets to the get real with God. And I think sometimes, especially we see videos like that and we see people up here praying and I hear it all the time where it's like, I just don't know how to pray. Or I've asked people before, hey, would you pray for us? And they're like, oh, I can't pray. I don't know, that's like not my thing. Which is okay, but here's what the prayer is. It's just talking to God. And sometimes I think we get caught in this idea that God wants this perfect Sunday morning version of us. He wants us to say things like, Father, thou art good in heaven. And we need to say things in the right order, in the right way, in order for our prayer to count, when in reality, God just wants you. He wants the broken you, the messy you, the you that is hurting so much right now, the you that has messed up time and time again and you're not sure that you are worthy of forgiveness anymore, but that's the you that God wants. And he wants us to be so real with him, so authentic with him. He doesn't want you to sugarcoat your prayers. He just wants you to talk to him. I think about if I had a friendship where all I ever did was ask for things, say thank you, ask for things, say thank you, and I never told them what was really going on or where I was hurting or how I was feeling, that would be one of the most shallow friendships. It wouldn't be really a relationship. It's a transaction. It's like a checkout clerk at the grocery store. That's that kind of friendship. Can you check this out for me? Thank you, cool, thank you. And sometimes that's the kind of relationship with God we have. When's the last time you just had a conversation with him? And it's kind of hard because you're like waiting for him to answer and he answers in kind of confusing ways sometimes. But if you're talking to everyone else and you can be real with everyone else and you can't be real with the God who loves you and who's forgiven you, and if you're afraid right now that maybe he won't accept you, I'm gonna tell you that God loves you so much that you're not gonna be met with judgment. You're gonna be met with love and grace and mercy. You're gonna be met with forgiveness. Just like in this prayer that Jesus modeled, he gets real, he says, God, help us not give in to temptation. Sometimes we don't want to admit that we have temptation to God. And you wanna know something? He's not surprised. He's not surprised when we mess up. But he wants us to be able to go to him and talk to him. I think when we answer these three questions and we think about prayer in these ways, what am I asking God for? What am I thanking God for? What am I talking to God about? It becomes less of a task. It's not a check mark. It's not something on your to-do list. But it's a conversation. It's a relationship. That's where this idea of a relationship with God comes from. 
If communication is important to every other relationship in our lives, you better believe it's important to our relationship with God. That's why Jesus modeled it. It's why we talk about it. So I want to challenge us this week to try praying. And here's something. You won't be good at it at first. You will forget about it. It will feel awkward. And that is okay. We never expect it to be like, man, McKenna said I should pray. I pray every day for 30 minutes a day now. Boom, super Christian. It's going to take some work at it, and that's okay. And so maybe you need to get super practical about it. Set reminders in your phone. Take, like, sticky notes and put them all over your house saying, oh, I need to pray for this. I need to pray for this. I want to talk to God about this. And if that's what it takes at first, that's awesome. God's not going to be upset that you had to remind yourself to pray. He's going to be happy that you're sitting there with him, talking with him. And so what would it look like if we changed our prayer lives this week? How would our relationship with God change? How would we feel his presence differently? I'm going to go ahead and give us a time to pray right now. And it's going to be a little different because I'm not going to do any talking. I want to leave it silent. And I want you to have a moment to talk to God about these three things. What are you asking God for? It can be as little or as big because God wants it all and he can handle it all. What are you thanking God for? Same thing there. Sometimes when I feel like I'm in seasons where I'm not very thankful for things, I write down every single little thing I can think of. If it rained, and I love rain, I'll write that down. If I caught all the green lights on the way to work, thanks to the green lights, God. It can be as simple as that, but when you do that, your heart starts to change because you see more of where God is. And then what are you talking to God about? Take a minute to get real with him. Just be honest. Would you guys bow your heads, close your eyes? And just in this quiet over these next few minutes, I want you to be real in this moment. Don't mess around or be on your phone. Maybe you're here and you've never talked to God before and this is going to be a first conversation. That's great. Just take this time and talk to God. God, I thank you that prayer is as easy as that. God, that it doesn't have to be said perfect, that we don't have to have all the right words, we don't have to be in any special place. God, wherever we are, you're there, and you're ready and wanting to listen and hear us. God, I pray we wouldn't take that fact for granted, that you're so close, that you care so much, that you want every intimate detail of our lives. God, I pray for those of us in the room that struggle with prayer, that we would look at it like a conversation, that we wouldn't be afraid, God, to ask you and trust you to provide for us, wouldn't be afraid to bring you our big, bold, crazy prayers, 
God, that we would look for the ways that you have shown up in our lives and thank you and give you praise for them. God, that we would be real with you, have a conversation with you, allow you to get to know us because that's what you want. Our whole hearts, exactly the way we are, broken and messy and imperfect, and you love us exactly that way. So God, I pray we would be challenged in our prayer life. And as we are, God, that we would notice our relationship with you growing that much stronger. We would feel your presence every time we talk to you. That we would grow closer to you because of it. I pray for the bold prayer requests that are said today, God. That you would show up in mighty ways, crazy ways that maybe we weren't even sure you could, but you can handle it. Lift all these prayers up to you, God, from every student around the room. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for watching. We are so glad that you landed on our page. And it's not by accident. So make sure you turn on the post notifications, like this video, and we'll see you next time on our next video.